it'll be this this one all right yeah looks good you can see so i think what's happening is this starts at uh, three minutes but people will still be dragging their feet so yep. we, we will start a few minutes later and then i'll just greet people as they come into the room sure okay and um, thanks for your email and we're all set it seems yeah let me see and then there's a presentation tomorrow uh, twilio is presenting on next generation financial services through api okay and who's um who's the speaker Big John Meta, Global Head of Financial Services, the global guy. Yep. All right. So did you, I mean, maybe what I'll do is I'll let you introduce yourself because I think it's going to be better than what I picked off LinkedIn. <laughs> uh, but I'll, I'll just give your job title and a little bit about Twilio. Sure. Yep. And I was seeing uh, on 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 Wikipedia, there's been quite a lot of acquisitions in the last yes. few years. So, uh, yes, SendGrid, segments, and then a whole bunch of smaller. Yeah. Yeah. Are they are they integrated, or does that take time? Uh, we sell them, but um, technically, well, the big ones like Segment and SegMed are, are still running their own their own stack for for the most part. Yeah. Yeah, and it's kind of a tricky one, right? It's all APIs. Uh, one, it's it's all it's all integrated with a with a very particular spec, right? So kind of it's a process, isn't it? To uh, it's a process, yes. To decide what's going to be kept. I mean, it's even like that when you're just dealing with intellectual property, not not, yeah. not even <laughs> tooling. You have to decide what to keep. Yeah. No, but yeah, sort of the um, the right. The intent was to be as non disruptive as possible uh, for for existing customer base. Mm -hmm. So the <clears throat> the kind of the cross pollination and uh, integration happens at kind of the higher level, if you wish. Uh, so in 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 new products and new developments, which um, which incorporate. All these varying bits and pieces that we that we acquired, but it's not really about just moving people from api.segment.com to api.twilio.com. Right? That's that's a pointless exercise. Yes, and it also depends on the company, how product cent centric the company is, how customer centric. Dif different different companies do things in different ways. Hmm. Yeah. So we have, uh, is it Josephine? Joe Lowe. Yeah, that's um, that's our that's our marketing manager. Marketing manager, okay. Yeah, that's great. Hi, yeah. If you can hear us. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> we we don't have the means to bring you on. Well, I think we do have the means to bring you on, but I think that we're okay. Uh, so anything in the chat? So encourage people to ask questions. Promotes developer sites that you may have anything that seems to be relevant. Otherwise, otherwise I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yes. but I, I won't. I won't know what to promote. So I can only say hello to people when they join. And Ratti, my colleague, has joined. Look, it's all us. Ratti, talk to each Ratti. other. Ratti, Ratti, <laughs> Ratti, Ratti. Hello. Uh, yes, so um, people are coming out of other tracks and, um, you know, lumbering from one conference room to another by moving the mouse, right? Um, <laughs> very, very lazy <laughs> going to conferences these days. You just have to toggle the mouse and decide if there's enough time to get another cup of coffee or something. <laughs> <laughs> Re remember what in-person conferences were like, right? We actually had to physically move around a venue. 
I I'm not sure this uh, I'm not sure this was was um, was real anymore. Uh, <laughs> well, it depends on the interaction. Um, you know, people show up; they they come for a reason. And uh, our last roundtable had about twelve people, so let's hopefully we we get a good good turnout here, and uh, also a good chance to promote the uh, session tomorrow morning and the uh, the booth as well, so people can get some ideas on what to ask. So we've got uh, Taku joining. Welcome. We're just waiting just a couple of minutes for people to come out the other tracks, gather their thoughts. And um, so, so we've got about 25 minutes on API driven communications in finance, the challenges and opportunities. Um, so I think I'd, whilst we wait for people to come in, I will just talk about uh, Twilio being um, the best digital customer experience. Um, enabled through communications platform. Okay, um, and we're just going to hear very much specifics on this for the next 25 minutes around uh, communications in banking. Then after that, there's going to be another session around omnichannel. All right, so I think that will be a fair coverage of of what's on offer. Uh, we've got Pavel Rebrov, if I pronounce it correctly. Is that correct, Pavel? That's correct. Great, and your principal solutions architect. So I'll let you sort of talk more about what you do, and obviously you're you're a very seasoned technologist in companies large and small, right? So you, so you get the yeah. big company and the small company, and also um, around um, regional and API driven communications, CPAS. Yeah. All right, so. Only got a short time. Twenty-five minutes goes really quickly. Uh, format will be: um, if you'd just like to say something about yourself, give us an overview, perhaps, and then we, we'll see it from there. We welcome questions on the chat, and uh, we've already had some questions come in from from uh, the registration portal. So, yeah. So, so with that, over to you. Thanks, Pavel. Yes. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, thank you to everyone who's joined and um, regards to everyone who's watching the recording. My name is Pavel. I'm a principal solutions architect at Twilio. I'm based in Singapore, been in the in the country for 10 years. And I'm generally the technical guy in the in the in the sales process. So my job is to help customers understand what Twilio is, uh, what are the best ways to use our platform, what are the best ways to achieve business value with our platform. Um, yeah, so um, I'll very quickly, very briefly introduce uh, what Twilio is, what we do. Um, so Twilio is um, is the world's leading customer engagement platform um, that enables customers to build intelligent customer experiences at scale. So anything that has to do with communication through basically any channel, uh, we can help with that at any level of the stack whether it's atomic API that sends a singular message or whether it's a it's a it's kind of an in-browser SDKs that drive APIs to build contact center experience. Uh, Twilio currently has over 10 million developers on the platform. We serve over 220,000 businesses in um, over 180 countries. And in fact, this year we, or well, already last year, we celebrated delivering one trillion digital interactions um, on our platform, which includes WhatsApp, SMS, voice minutes, um, um, emails sent, and so on and so forth. So that's a staggering number. Twilio has been uh, recognized for the, um, for the impacts as um, the most innovative enterprise company by Fast Company, by Financial Times as one of the fastest growth company, companies, and Deloitte's technology Fast 500 um, for 2020. Um, it's not just the just the industry peers and um, and analysts that um, that kind of see value. We pride ourselves on on customer testimonials such as such as one from uh, from ING Bank, which is one of our lighthouse customers. And we'll talk a little more about specifics of how other customers in banking or or other industries use us. But basically, what ING <clears throat> kind of tried to find, and we believe what they found in Twilio is is the last customer engagement platform they'll ever need, meaning Twilio is expected to scale and so far has been delivering scaling with their customers 
delivering functionality, delivering security and reliability that customers expect. Um, speaking of customers and the market, uh, this is this is a very enlightening <laughs> um, um, piece of research that we've done. Um, we uh, we you know among our customers and uh, and prospects and generally industry, we kind of asked a few questions in our um, communication divide research, and we found that ninety four percent of the businesses report or rather think that they have great communication with their customers. Uh, funnily enough, 96% of consumers disagree. Why does that happen? <clears throat> what businesses see as kind of minor roadblocks uh, and, and minor hiccups, um, customers perceive as massive, massive uh, flaws in, in communication. So when business struggles to keep up with new, uh, with new channels uh, or provide seamless experience between touch points, all of these are kind of, especially in a large siloed environment like 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 a bank or insurance company is, these are seen as um, as mundane facts of life, right? Uh, but that results in um, in in poor customer experience. So customers miss important information. They have to repeat themselves over and over again each time they pass down the line from one person or a bot to another one. Uh, customers feel like they are treated as a ticket, not as a human being. And ultimately, they lose trust in the business, which is, um, well, if we talk about financial institutions, trust is what the industry runs on. So uh, what's, the, what's the way out of it? Uh, this might not be, um, how do I put this? This might not be an easy <laughs> um, proposition but um you got to take ownership so great customer experience doesn't come in a box and you have to build it um and we see that 92 percent of senior executives report that developers were crucial to solve business challenges that came from the pandemic interesting thing about the what what what's what 2020 brought is um kind of the the reason for this digital acceleration that happened, right? A lot of the standard playbook, uh, kind of the old normal was spending months, sometimes years on compliance and legal negotiations and all of that stuff. Uh, and 2020 threw a lot of that through the window. And uh, this, is, this is probably the biggest empowerment event for, for technologists where technologists were allowed and encouraged to take risks and they had support of the executives in that. Um, and I think the, the pace of innovation that 2020 brought is a clear testament to how much build wins over buy on a grand scheme of things. Um, and um, yeah, if uh, if it's something that you can buy, um, you know, on a top shelf, then that means your competitor can buy the same, and your competitive competitive advantage is kind of um, diminished, right? If if you will buy the same, <laughs> then where's the where's the advantage? Um, just a real quick uh, logo wall. Um, we we power some of the world's largest companies uh, in financial services. These are guys like Standard Chartered, Stripe. Sing Live, Morgan Stanley, IMG, Westpac in Australia, some of the largest and leading banks. Uh, we have strong presence in travel and hospitality, Uber, Lyft, Gojek, Grab, Airbnb, Deliveroo. These are all customers that use us for majority of their communications. Um, and, um, you know, naturally, any, any type of business that requires lots, that requires dealing with a lot of, um, a lot of consumers, a lot of end users, um, we see them being very successful at Twilio. Uh, so yeah, Twilio is the intelligent customer engagement platform, um, powers data-driven communications across the all digital channels, and some of Twilio's acquisitions um, are indicative of that. Um, like Twilio had acquired a company called Segment.com, which is a CDP, customer data platform, uh, acquisition and data routing um, solution. 
Uh, Twilio creates one cohesive customer con conversation across teams. Again, this is the multi-channel, omni-channel story. Um, acquisitions like SendGrid uh, are what propels us towards uh, towards the goal of being um, being able to reach every customer through every channel. Uh, our roots are we're still a developer platform, right? Um, our customers are inevitably developing against our platform. There is no box that you can buy from Twilio.com, uh, switch it on and forget about it. So tools are incredibly important and naturally trust, compliance and security are at the root of how we design our products. And we'd be happy to see what we can build together. That's my that's my uh, slightly longer elevator pitch. <laughs> I'd elevator be happy. pitch, it looks really interesting. <laughs> Hey, hey uh, so so the company's been doing this for like 10, 10, 10 years, right? Building up these customers, so it didn't it didn't happen overnight. Well, I mean, where have the biggest changes happened? Just to put things in perspective, like where were you? Where are you now? And then we can come back to the topic. Of the yeah. So Twilio was founded in two thousand eight. We are we are uh, we are a slightly over ten year old company. Um, funnily enough, it's uh, people think of Twilio as more or less glorified sms gateway but voice was our first product mm -hmm. so programmable voice um <clears throat> which was the when our founder um was building another startup and tried to uh tr try to procure a sieve trunk and realized how painful it was um so that's when that's when twilio was born uh twilio is one of the original c pass companies right communication platform as a service um we do see that's the over over these over these 13 years the the notion of of an api driven communication platform has changed right the competition is fierce uh the the price of atomic apis and the value of an atomic api call is diminishing like sending an sms is not a value value is contact and customer so that means there's a lot of stuff up the stack from sending an actual WhatsApp message or email. That's orchestration, that's data-driven communication, that's being able to reach the customer through multiple channels and at the right time, most importantly. So that's why Twilio invests heavily into these higher stack APIs, right? We're still a platform, but it's not just the just just JSON that you that you JSON and HTTP that you interact with us um, anymore. It's SDKs that run in browsers, on mobile devices, in native applications that power video, voice, um, in, in any of these combinations that's, um, that integrate data from multiple different sources and allow to push this through your ETL process and stuff like that. So building value on top of basic communication scenarios is the name of the game for Twilio now. You're on mute, Jonathan. <laughs> Sorry, I had something covering that. Uh, so I'd like to bring it to the topic of financial services. So, so that summary, and I also like to invite people on the uh, to interact through the chat, so I can get your questions. Um, what, what, I, like you've said, uh, bringing the uh, the services up the stack, I guess, to address these customer customer uh, service issues, poor customer service that you talked to earlier, yep. and to do also in the context of uh, the, the global digital paradigm, right? The changes which are happening re recently. Mm -hmm. So, so I, you know, I have a question within this, um, in that, so within the financial services, you showed some customers, right? I, they were really yes. big names, and I don't want to single anyone out. There's no bias. Okay. Yep. Um, and the thing there is, have you got any examples of 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 what they've been doing? I mean, to to improve the customer experience, because that gap was tremendous, right? Over ninety yep. percent of customer experience. Maybe that might be a point to just bring in the the the, the sort of services that you you provided. Uh, yeah. So um, the most the most notable and probably kind of easily winning combo is um, is done by Morgan Stanley, I believe, uh, which uses us for um, the, the, the first big use case was, was with um, wealth management or um, kind of, so wealth management is generally kind of a separate, separate area of, of a banking business. 
these are high net worth um, uh, individuals who whose expectations are much higher than anyone else's, and also um, their expectation of privacy are much higher than anyone else's, right? So what Morgan Stanley did initially is uh, once the once once uh, once the whole bring your own device shift happened at the bank, once their relationship managers were off Blackberries and on on their on the iPhones, what happened is they essentially kind of took that customer interaction off the bank site. Um, and it was it kind of worked because everyone was on the move, everyone was uh, was 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 able to reach their customers, but it jeopardized trust in a massive way. And it also made the communication less efficient. Because um, to put to put yourself into RM shoes, uh, when someone when your when your client calls you, uh, where do you get the the data of what their last interaction with us was? Do they have an open ticket? Are they uh, did they withdraw money from from somewhere else? So what Morgan Stanley did is they develop a mobile app for their relationship managers. Uh, and solve two problems. First of all, they integrated customer data into that application directly, and they integrated all of communication channels into that as well. So first of all, RMs don't have um, details of customers on their own device anymore, not not in there. Secondly, when when a call comes in onto your personal iPhone, you CRM that pops up on screen and tells you this is such and such, this is their level, uh, this is their program participation, this is their active open tickets, uh, they're stuck in Philippines and uh, they can't withdraw money. So that is, you know, probably why they're calling. So that massively, massively improved their, um, their NPS scores and, um, and retention with high net worth individuals. So this is not as scalable probably, uh, but there are, there are other examples. Um, like ING rebuilt their whole contact center with us. Uh, problem they had was with traditional solutions, uh, the the big names in contact center industry, their ability to innovate was significantly um, hindered. Like changing an IVR requires specific knowledge, requires specific you know, more often than not to make a significant change to a customer journey, you have to go to your SI, your system integrator, you have to, you have to scope it. It, it takes weeks uh, to, to, to get to testing, to deploy it, yada, da, da, da. They wanted to take control of their, of their customer roadmap or their contact center roadmap and be able to do it in-house. So in fact, interestingly enough, their whole global um, contact center Technology team started with like five people. I think they're fifteen now, but they handle um, they handle applications that used to that used to take the the GSI contracts to uh, to manage. So it's both a win in time to market, time to innovate and deploy to market, and um, and the um, and the control over 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 customer journey and customer experience. Thank example there like you're saying it's pretty pretty customer focused and you had a very demanding customer or business right wealth managers <laughs> um, yes yeah and, and those are at the same time um interesting enough those are those are often the most innovative right because uh the this is this is the high margin business <laughs> at a bank and this is uh this is where we see a lot of requests coming from um finally enough so, so I've got some questions which came in. When you registered, uh, everyone got, got the chance to write a question, and so we've matched the questions to this particular session. Of course, I welcome we or we both welcome questions in the chat, in the chat box. We just take them as they come. Um, so, okay, you've got on one hand these these wealth managers who you, they, they they got it, okay, and they need yep. they had the uh, time to value issue. Um, many of these financial services have got that legacy system. Yeah, you've already alluded to that, right? Yeah. And we're not we're not mentioning vendors because everybody knows that. You've, you've discreetly put it as contact the SI. Um, mm -hmm. So how do we get started? So this question is, how do we get started with APIs at a legacy organization? Right. So they didn't mention financial services, but mm. yeah, case. 
Okay. Um, yeah, that's that's a, that's a good uh, question. There's there's kind of um, so the first the first order of business um, in any legacy organization is securing securing support of business owners. Depending on what kind of support you secure, you can start small. Right, there's two schools of thought. Um, let's get small wins, um, low hanging fruits, or let's go for the big uh, transformation. Uh, and this, frankly, always has to do with um, with um, with ambition and personality of of an executive sponsor. Um, in so today. In banks specifically, interesting enough, we see we see we see the new type of innovation hub, which are called digital banks. If you remember, ten years ago, every big organization wanted to innovate. They would they would set up these innovation hubs, whatever, um, put some people in 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 a co working space and let them invent something, and then find them um, find uh, find out if it worked. Today. These digital banking licenses that um, Monetary Authority of Singapore and, and Hong Kong and, and, and UK are issuing seem to be a natural um, natural um, innovation um, innovation hub for for big banks. So we see a lot of a lot of API adoption happening there before it gets um, before it before it gets reabsorbed into the mothership. Um, so to get started. Um, find a project uh, that's um, that's that that's that you can secure executive sponsorship with. I would guess these often come. Unfortunately, very few very few of people that we interact with. I'll be very honest. Very few people have customer experience in mind. Right. Usually, these API. The word API doesn't cross mind of chief experience officer. What crosses their mind is different terminology. So API, if, and if we talk about how do we start with API, uh, that squarely lies in the realm of IT organization. IT organization cares about costs of maintenance and cost and, and time to market more, than, more often than not. So finding optimizations I think um, the projects that optimize something away uh, is is a good avenue. At many many banks, our entry point is by removing a lot of telco complexity. Like a distributed a distributed organization will have a lot of telco relationships with a variety of organizations across the region across the world. Removing that. Is is often a very massive, massive win. So removing management overhead from having twenty different telco contracts that that all offer different SLAs, all offer different rates, all offer each one of them has to be reviewed and rerun as an RFP. Each of them has to be um, reassessed for security, so it has to be audited often yearly, annually. So, getting those savings um, is um, is a very welcomed um, <laughs> project. Quite often. So, so that's that's the um, low hanging fruit cost savings and driven through IT. Yes, I mean, so what what do um, like most banks, uh, most organizations care about costs, right? Banks also care about risk more than any other organization. So um, <clears throat> marrying the two kind of, yes, if you can reduce the cost while maintaining the risk, uh, that, that's, what makes, that's what makes a low-hanging fruit. Anything increasing risk doesn't, that becomes you know, something else but not a low-hanging fruit. Someone has to own the risk, someone has to account for that uh, and counter that and so on and so forth. So um, I think if you maintain risk level but reduce the cost, that is um, that in my experience is kind of a good way to um, to, uh, to to get started. Right. So it's going to be a big decision, right? Um, Everything for a bank is a big decision, right? Yeah. So so maybe that's something that is unique. 
I mean, is there anything else that might be unique to a bank? I mean, probably around governance, compliance, and security. Yes, so. yes. yes, compliance. Um, compliance is something that certainly um, makes banking unique. Compliance and regulation um, and, and government governance is, is part of that. So uh, one of the questions and one of the questions that came in uh, was specifically, if you remember in the list, who bears the liability of um, unauthorized access to an open banking API, which is an interesting question. And it's a very loaded one, right? Because uh, yes, it has to do with security, but more so it has to do with liabilities uh, that come with compliance. So banks are in a unique position where they, the risks the cost of risk is incredibly high. The risks are themselves are probably the same, but the cost both perceived and enforced by the regulators is staggering. So the that's that's what makes banks unique, I believe, right? Not even the, the fact that they are old institutions, often over 100 years old. We've seen organizations that, uh, that successfully transformed themselves being 70 years old and so old, so, so forth, because the cost of risk is, is um, is lower for those so but speaking of digital banks right i think this is an interesting um interesting trend in the market that teaches both regulators and these legacy enterprises in financial industry uh that's i take it as a kind of a exploration of risk tolerance right when hong kong ma uh, monetary authority gives out licenses for digital banking the compliance requirements are different than those than they are for traditional banks. Mm -hmm. So that means that these that's what enables digital banks to innovate faster, deploy faster, come up with innovative um, use cases. And I think um, and I think more more than anything, this will be this will be the driver for for the for the industry wide transformation. So to the question, can APIs help secure banking systems? Can they help with the security? Uh, probably not. <laughs> uh, the, the The most secure system is uh, is is an air gapped, uh, preferably uh, unplugged uh, box, right? Uh, <laughs> so APIs uh, APIs inevitably increase um, the the attack surface area. So while securing them is important uh, and following best practices and making sure that um, data governance is is in place. I don't think that API in itself is any method to um, to security. So, so there's no one size fits all through the technology. It's coming from the transformation in the industry, the transformation brought by the current times we're in, and the overall uh, adoption of new models, right? Data governance and risk models and understanding. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. So no yeah. no silver bullet. No silver bullet. So APIs can help in achieving higher security by uh, by by making stuff like multi-factor authentication easier or uh, or account verification easier. Uh, but it's it's uh, these are these are these are tools. The uh, they are like any tool. They um, in themselves they don't they don't build houses, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think, yeah, quite quite a lot there is that uh, there there seem to be really compelling reasons on a cost savings perspective, also on a situational where we are in the current uh, business environment, moving towards digital banks, not moving towards with digital banks and the imperatives that come with that. So we're at 25 minutes. So technically we finish this session on um, API driven communication in finance. So a lot covered there. Uh, have I summarized it all? Probably not. Um, perhaps if there are any questions, what we could do is just allow those to come in. And then following this session, uh, sort of speeding it along, we're, we're going to be talking about om omni-channel communication, not necessarily in the financial services, unless you want to carry on talking about that, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine either way. You, you seem to have a few stories, right? You've, you've been doing this for a while. <laughs> Always do, yes. <laughs> but yeah, so banks are, banks are the most... Um, most most challenging but also the most rewarding um customers in many ways right but um i think 
like speaking of unique uniqueness in in uh, in compliance and governance, I have yet to work with a big bank that took less than six months to fully complete um, what they call TPSA, right? Third party security assessment. Yeah. And at some point, in one must one must start thinking whether 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 they whether they should have developed the solution themselves, right? Because trying to bend the market uh, into 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 and this compliance is always or more often than not is on top of like SOC two and ISO twenty seven double double one. So it's you can be compliant to all these expectations of regulations, uh, but banks will always have more. Um, so it's surprising to me that uh, they still want to buy because there's such a there's so much so much so much effort spent on um, ensuring compliance from someone else. Well, arguably, these man hours would be better spent developing that unique solution that fits your fits your bill from the get go. Yes, and that's to the point of moving upstream or up stack. I think did you call it up stack? Uh, yeah. Up up the layer of value to touch the business problems more. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And you talked about time to market for IT and time to value for the business. So this yes. this seems to, seems to align, and I guess not every financial institution will be able to do this, and then they have to bear the consequences, whatever they might be. Okay, so um, let's see. We've got. Um, I mean, unless there are any other questions, I'd like to to move on to the next uh, topic, which is which is again, ask us anything. This is a round table, right? So there's no question. Uh, there's no question to to uh, naive or too expert. Well, do are you sure we don't need to re <laughs> re rejoin through another URL? Um, or... I'm not actually sure. Actually, let me see. <laughs> <laughs> we might need to. Good point. Okay. Okay. What what? Yeah, we could face that risk, right? So what I'm going to do is just take that that risk and leave this session and then we rejoin. So anyway, thanks everyone for attending this and uh, see you on the other side in the new session, which is called Ask Us Anything About API Driven Omnichannel Communications. Um, and let's, let's see if we can convene again. Okay, see you. See you in a moment. Thank you.